And today's video is all about alliums or onions, shallots and leeks, some of the leeks anyway. Um, and then maybe some of these peas as well. Now I sow my onions on the traditional day, Boxing Day, 26th of December. And later on into January, that's when I sow my leeks. And then into February, that's when I sow my shallots. That's just the way I've always done it. And um, they're now ready to plant out. But um, you can do some uh, bed prep before, um, before you plant out your onions. If you're planting out directly into soil, the traditional way is to dig your bed over in autumn, add well-rotted compost or manure, uh, and, and just leave it and ready for a, a light fork over in the spring before you plant. Now I'm gardening mostly on no dig here, so I don't need to do that, but I am still gonna put a couple of traditional amendments into that no dig, even though I shouldn't really need to. It's habit, it's something I've always done and something therefore I can't stop doing because I know it works. And I'm using some, uh, one of them, probably a lot of gardeners out there haven't even heard of uh, and that's calcified seaweed or as we used to call it marl that's m-a-e-r-l and so it's a calcified seaweed and back when we used to use it in um, god the, the early 1970s around that sort of time um, then it we didn't know that much about it but we knew what it did we knew that it was good for onions and all of the allium family and it was also good for breaking up clay soil now if you imagine your sort of typical um, soil soil ingredients if you like you've got clay silt gravel humus sand all those sorts of things bits of stone and pebbles most of those things are of a quite a large size but clay is absolutely tiny particles almost microscopic and what happens with clay is because it is so fine it washes down to a, a very thick layer it all washes down so close to each other and that's what happens with clay and why it becomes so solid to dig and why when if you've got terribly clay soil it will crack on the surface because it's so close together the water evaporates away and it starts to crack. Now we knew then as gardeners that if you added the calcified seaweed or the marl, what that happened was, and this is a great word, it flocculated the, the clay particles. And what that means is it, whereas each individual particle was individual in the soil, but clinging together as a mass, the, the marl will actually make those particles stick together so you become granular and bigger and your soil becomes freer and easier to use. And then of course some bright spark realised later on that it was good for growing their onions in and that's how these things develop. So I've used the marl ever since then uh, for my onions and alliums. Well back then in the 70s again we, we were using sort of chemicals and things that we didn't really know too much about. We knew we had a problem or there was a problem in agriculture or garden in, ge in general, something would be invented to counteract that and then we didn't really know the long-term results. And as a consequence of that, a lot of the chemicals that we used to use back then are now either banned or we don't use them. So um, with the marl and the calcified seaweed back then, it was harvested from the seabed by trawlers, basically, unsustainably. And we didn't know this at the time, we do now and now it is harvested from renewable sources and it is sustainable so it's clean and green to use again so i'm going to continue to use that and uh, we'll go and, we'll go and treat the bed anyway <laughs> now this is my planting grid that i use for a lot of the planting on these beds it fits in the size of this bed and uh, why I use it is to keep things organised and keep them in short rows. Now you can see I've already got the onions in quite big spacing, so that's so I can get in amongst them and how. And I just simply planted them using my homegrown trowel and got them in the ground. So nothing too special with them. But with this grid, what we have here is this is my hoe, this and this is a swow. So it's got a cutting edge here along the back. And along the front so if you push it cuts pull it cuts and if you go to the side you can get in between 
things like onions and shallots. And if you look here with this, this is the distance that I want between the shallots, so I know it's two squares. So I can be organized in my planting and still be able to get in and maintain them. And all I'm gonna do is just dibble some holes that distance apart. And these are my shallots, nice little plugs ready to go. Just simply drop them in and there we go, plant it. And then the grid will lift off without disturbing those. And it's just a nice, easy, organized way of planting. And then you can easily get in between these plants later to hoe down the weeds and keep them under control, which is vitally important. And again, nothing else special than that. I'll just take the grid off, move it down and plant this bed out with all, all of these shallots. So I'm gonna get these leeks in now, but they're not my main crop leeks. They won't go in for a couple of months yet. What I've got here is multi-sown leeks. Again, in the containerized trays. So nice root system on it. These are multi-sown, I say there's three in that one. And what I'm wanting from these is early leeks, but baby leeks for through the autumn. So we get that variance in, in the crops that uh, I'm harvesting. You know, the onions will be up um, and in storage, but we'll be able to eat these through the autumn while we're expecting getting ready for the normal leeks just makes a different different harvest and a different dish and I'm going quite close with these because they won't be in for a full season um, and I'll just plant these out I've given the bed a light dressing of the marl again you can see the little spot, spots of them there so they should do well, and then we'll come back in a minute and uh, show you the next set of leeks. Now, those who have been following me for a while know me and know that I always, if I can, like to have a backup plan. Um, so if things go wrong, I've got another way of progressing with, with my growing. And this is a pot, I always do a spot, pot of spare leeks, and I just basically empty a packet into the soil and let them get on with it. There's probably two, three hundred leeks in there, more than I'm going to need, but it cost me a pound. So all I'm going to do, all I want to do is just break these apart. It can be quite rough with them. And then because I use safe compost, I can mostly just shake off all that loose compost and all these will come apart. If they don't, just loosen them off. Get rid of that last bit of compost. And if they still won't, and that's what the bucket of water is for, just wash it off. You can see now that these roots, nice and free and easy to do with as I want. And because there were so many leaks in that pot and they've been in there literally since January, I think, all the feed in that is totally exhausted and they're just sat there sulking. They're not doing much at all. So I'm going to make a couple of trenches in this where I've just planted these baby leeks. Make a couple of trenches, lay these out in it, put the soil over it and heal them in. And they can be growing away in a very small area. And I can use them later if I need to or pass them on to somebody else. But in essence, it's, it's taken no effort to clean these. It's taken no effort to sow the seed. And it's just a pot of compost and a little bit of time and care to making sure you've got that backup plan if something goes wrong or you need extra plants or you've got spaces to fill, whatever. So that's a cracking way. We'll get on now, I'll clean these and then we'll quickly show you how I plant them. So we have our very brutally cleaned washed and separated leeks there, baby leeks. And I'm just moving them on because they need that extra feed that they're not gonna get in the pot that they were in. And using my own made or homegrown trowel, just gonna part some soil here and make a little trench. 
and take each little clump, just spread them out roughly. There's nothing precise about this at all because you've got hundreds of seedlings here. If you wanted to grow every one, you'd just take a little bit more time, a little bit more time and a little bit more care. I'm just gonna lay those across the trench like so. And this is, you don't actually see it that much these days, gardeners healing plants in, but it's an old term. Many gardeners watching this will know the term. Because you literally just dig a trench, cover them in soil, and then you put your heel down on them, like that. And this is all you're doing with them. You're just covering those roots. They've got better, better ground to go at now in there. You can stand them up if you want. Which will look aesthetically a bit, please, a bit more pleasing. But now those can grow on in a bigger area with better feed and you don't have to water them because they're not indoors anymore. So that's one pot of extra seedlings there that will grow on. And if needs be, if you think you're going to need them later, you can take a couple of bunches out and separate them out as well and grow them on before you're ready to plant them out. It's all about giving them the feed and the space to grow. So I've already had my garlic in for quite some time as you can see and this is my elephant garlic. Now I've just added, today I've added some of these ale set onions and then there's a brunch lots. And over here I've added um, their baby leeks and their blue de soleils and then some mussel brill leeks, which I've just cleaned up. They were all grown in a pot, just a whole packet thrown in, or near a whole packet. And they've been separated off, cleaned off, and replanted in a, in a little trench, little trench, and then healed in. And on the end here, I'm gonna put these peas in. I'm not gonna do it on video, but these are just growing in a gutter. Just gonna take the end off, draw a shallow drill, and then just slide them out and plant them. I'll be covering peas in another upcoming video, so, but well, there we go. So do consider using the calcified seaweeds with all your alliums that you're growing. Go and have a look at look it up on Google and, and learn about it. It's not the same as liquid sea, seaweed. Um, so make that difference, you know, get, get to know that difference and find out what it does over and above what I've already told you. Now, don't forget Monday nights, there's the live show over on Tony C. Smith's channel. And this week we've got guests, I'll be on there. Uh, Tony will, because it's his channel. Yeah, we have to have him. <laughs> um, I believe Jesse from Plot 37 is gonna be on, although I'm not, I haven't had that confirmed. And JB from JB's Naturally, Naturally JB. Oh, Patricia, you know who it is. Anyway, so don't, don't forget that. That's on Monday night, 7 o'clock on Tony's channel. And we're on for an hour and we, we shoot the breeze about gardening. So have a good look at that and enjoy it. But for now, that's it. Look after yourselves, everyone. Please stay safe. I'll see you all very, very soon. Ta-ra now.